Welcome back to Falling Fox Gaming, everybody. I'm your host, Blaine, and today we're going to be playing Skyrim. Now, we're going to be starting a brand new series here, and we haven't really done Skyrim too much on the channel. It's just a couple of live streams over the years, nothing really special, but we're going to be doing kind of a full playthrough using the Gate to Sovngarde mod collection, which is essentially 1,600 mods, and then a couple more that I added on just for fun. Now, this mod collection completely changes the way Skyrim is played, but it still feels like Skyrim, and you guys will see as we get into it. Now, the character creation takes a little bit to kind of get going but it has the alternate starts pack so you get to kind of pick and choose what you start off as and kind of what equipment you start off with so you guys are going to see me start with some non-traditional stuff so let me go ahead and just run through the character creation really quick and then we will talk about exactly what we're going to be doing in our challenge survival playthrough of skyrim all right, now that we're done with character creation, I see that we are wearing completely different armor than i had selected so let's take a look and see why that is okay we have steel plate armor we have a mercenary battle axe and some additional equipment. Okay, so I see what happened. So the backstory that I want to go with is going to be a little bit contradictory to the stuff that we actually start off with now. And this is interesting because this kind of changes what I wanted to do. And I'm thinking we might stick with this. So for our backstory, what I was going to say is that we were an initiate in the Mages Guild in Cyrodiil. And because of our practices, we were kind of driven out. You see, we want power, lots of it, and we're willing to do anything to get it. Now, they were, didn't appreciate that, and so they kind of drove us out. So we decided to steal everything we could and kind of flee to Skyrim, using everything that we stole to sell and buy equipment. And this is kind of what we ended up with. I took some additional weapons and a bow and stuff because that's mostly for our future companion. I'm not going to be using those. In fact, I'm not going to use any of these weapons. In fact, I might just drop this battle axe right here. So effectively, we're only keeping the longbow and the iron bow because I want to give it to our first companion. Now, my first companion is planned to be in Whiterun, so that is where we're trying to make our way to. And in terms of our clothing and armor, I initially was going to go with just the mages stuff because I was thinking of going pure 100% mage this playthrough. But with them giving us steel plate armor, this kind of gives me a new idea. Instead of worrying about going pure cloth armor, which is the kind of the whole idea is that eventually you get the magic regeneration bonus, I don't think we're going to need that. So we're not going to use the mages gear at all. We are going to keep the robes and everything because we are going to be doing a little bit of role play where when we're in town, we're not going to be running around in our armor. Anytime we go to town, we're going to switch over into kind of like peasant clothes clothes or civilian clothes we'll call it that way we don't draw too much attention to ourselves. after all the whole point is that we're kind of on the run right now and we don't want to be drawing any attention to ourselves that we don't need now the steel plate armor is actually excellent for this because this means we're a little bit protected seeing as we're not going to be using weapons primarily we're going to be using our spells now we fled and we have these spell tomes these are the spells we effectively know i kept all the tomes because i do want to keep a uh, a book of all the spells that we have because I eventually want to make a little library of all the spells that we have. So I wanted to kind of keep all the tomes with us, which they do weigh one pound each, which is kind of a lot, but that's just kind of something we'll have to deal with. Now, primarily we're going to be using Conjuration and Illusion. We will definitely dabble in Restoration, Alteration, and Destruction, so that's why I made sure we had a spell of each one of those. I did not take all of the spells we could learn. I figured these made sense for a Mage's Guild Initiate. And then we have some food, actually a whole bunch, but they gave us a bunch. I only took like four or five things and they just give us a whole bunch of extra stuff so that's kind of cool now i don't need that we're not going to do anything to do with reducing magicka that's something that is just not going to flow well with us and then they gave us a couple scrolls which i don't think i'll use but i'll keep them just for now and then they gave us a couple additional potions i only picked one of each i think and they gave us a handful of each one so that's kind of nice i guess and then we have some additional jewelry that we can sell like not jewelry i'm um, sorry gems and then lock picks a loot and a torch to help keep us warm and that's everything so what we're going to be doing is we are going to well, <laughs> we are going to be relying purely on our spells and i mean purely as in like 100 percent. there's not a time where i'm going to use anything other than our spells unless we absolutely have to now if we take a look at our map here we have this big old mountain here which is i think high hrothgar whatever it's called i don't remember what the name of the actual mountain is but the big old mountain right in the center of skyrim here white run is just to the left and so is riverwood right down here somewhere so that's kind of our primary goal is to get in this general region by the end of today we are starting way down here at the pale pass which is all you know kind of part of my backstory stuff and that's why i chose this introduction which is the um mercenary going into cyrodiil and it looks like we might even be able to go to cyrodiil but I didn't even know that was a thing, so that's kind of cool. But our goal is to head north, and we have to worry about weather and eating and sleeping. So we need to make this trip as quick as possible. And I see that the path kind of leans off to the left and comes back to the right. I think we're going to try and just 
cheat this and go to the right and skip across down over here if possible. Going off trail is not necessarily a good idea ever, but I think we're at like the top part of the mountain right here. So I think this should all be downhill. So hopefully we can skip some time because we have no way to warm ourselves up. We don't have firewood or anything. So I want to make this as quick as possible. And then it should be noted that we are playing on legendary difficulty on survival mode. And my plan for this is to play a somewhat semi permadeath where if we die from something that's our own fault or just not being prepared, then we're dead. That's it. If we die from something that's just like completely unavoidable, then I'll allow us a respawn. But that's pretty much what we're going for. Yeah, high rough goes right there. Mountain pass right here. Uh, oh, I see something. Hold on, what's that? Can't see what that is. Um, uh, no, we can't summon a mirror. Those are zombies. Those are zombies. Um, okay. So here's the thing. The reason why ugh, I am choosing to be a summoner or a conjurer is because we cannot fight these guys. They will probably kill us in one hit, and that's part of the reason why I bothered to. And that's part of the reason why I chose not to bother with weapons is if they hit us. Yeah, look at that. They took out our our wolf like pretty much instantly. And our wolf only did half damage to one of them. So we are pretty much going to have to avoid fighting these guys. I saw one of them go up there. I don't know where the other one is. Well, that one tried to hide and ambush me. Get him, wolf. Why is the wolf going after that one? Okay. He's going after the one with full health, really? Oh, that's frustrating. Okay, oh, wolf got him. And we can check out our beast, Jerry. So he got him. That's good. Come on, wolf. Can we maybe shoot some flames over there just to give him a hand? Oh, he's dead. Run away. <laughs> now, I wasn't planning on using destruction, especially this early on, but it might be required to, to take these guys down. Okay. That'll do. And they have Mort Flesh, which is really heavy. I'm going to take one just so I can actually identify it, but that's too heavy to be carrying around. Now, I am not going to be playing this like we are an adventurer. We are not going to be looting everything. We'll search containers and stuff, but we're only going to take things that we actually need or want. Now, I'm concerned. Why were there undead here? Oh, what is going on down there? There's a whole bunch of them. What? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm going to back up. I think they saw me too. I'm going to sneak. Oh, and we're cold. That's not good. Okay, so our wolf is going to attack that one. That's good. See if we can help him out. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. There's three of them. And our minion is doing okay. Come on, get him. Oh, he almost got that guy. Ah! Oh, no. I don't have the stamina to run away. Okay, now here's the thing. So because we are playing with the Gate to Sovngarde mod collection, all of our combat stuff is actually changed. So we can't actually drink a potion on the run. We actually have to physically stop to drink a potion. Okay. <laughs> so far, honestly, so good. We're, we're doing all right. Now I'm just going to keep kind of lighting them on fire just a little bit to see if we can tick away at their health. Now I realize this is cowardly. And this is absolutely how we're going to play for now. Oh, did we get that one down? All right. Okay, so down to just those two. Okay, I'm going to actually see... They seem to be distracted, so I'm going to see if I can just like run past where they were. We don't necessarily have to fight. Fighting is not something we have to do, absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of take a peek down here and see what's down here. Oh my goodness, there's more of them. Oh, there's three more. Four more. What? Okay. Um. Well, oh no. Oh no. Uh, uh, we need to get out of here. Come on. Now, I don't even dare cast a spell because if we do, they are going to get us. Okay, run. There we go. Come on, wolf. Do your job. Help out whatever we can. My goodness. Okay. Well, this is going to be slow going. Okay, so we have like, what, seven of these guys to get rid of? Okay, so I think I can beat them. This is just going to be really slow to do. Okay, after killing all of these zombies, we managed to make our way down here. And I did search everything already to kind of pick and choose what we want. And there's some kind of crazy necromantic summoning circle-y thing here. And these little pyres here actually warmed us up. So I've been kind of just standing here waiting for it to heal us all the way up or warm us all the way up. Now, we did find a couple of really interesting things. We found a conjure zombies tome, which we spent time learning. 
and then we found a necromancer's journal or two of them and it actually started a quest for us so taking a quick peek here i'm just gonna i'll just kind of let you guys see what it looks like here something about necromancers which is amazing because so here's the thing i haven't had a chance to fully explain the backstory idea yet now one of the mods that we have installed is the lichdom mod which allows us to eventually become a lich if we want and that's kind of the path i wanted to take so us finding this like necromancer circle immediately is absolutely amazing i had no idea this was here and this is just kind of cool and thematically it fits so well okay so ignoring all of that stuff well not ignoring it that was really cool and helpful but we are now about to enter upon this place here now the thing is i hear someone banging on a smithy which suggests that there's people working and that could be bandits or potentially i mean where are we could it be empire people down here or storm cloaks or something not really sure. We're gonna go down and take a look here. We're gonna have to just take an easy path down here. Just kind of do the the old Skyrim -y thing here. Fort Newgrad. Okay, we have a little pier with a boat over there. Now I should probably try and get out our wolf here, just in case. Can we summon? Can we summon him up there? Yep, bad guys. Okay, so they are definitely bandits. I'm not really sure if we can take on bandits. They're going to have ranged weapons, probably, and that's going to be dangerous for us. Okay, so we managed to take out all of the bandits that were here. Now, there's a lot of them, and thankfully we had some Stormcloak people here that actually gave us a hand, and I pretty much skipped the combat for you guys because it was like a half an hour of me just hiding and summoning a wolf every once in a while. This first like level is just going to be awful for us. Now I did warm ourselves up by the fire, but I'm going to do it again while we're talking here. Kind of explain what's going on. Oh, yep, now we're tired too. We need to level up. The thing is, with us being such low level, we can only summon, we can only basically cast one spell at a time, and this combat is just grueling, and I don't think it's gonna be interesting to watch. So, I'm gonna keep kind of exploring this place and trying to clear it out as best I can, and hopefully, I can level up. Once I find a bed to level up a couple of times where we have just a little bit additional magicka, then we'll, I'll show some of the fights a little bit more, because right now, the fights are not interesting. It's just me summoning a wolf and hoping the wolf kills the guy, and if it doesn't, then I hide and run away and then come back. There were quite a few bandits here, and I mean like quite a bit. It's actually really interesting how many there were. They had this place fully taken over. And inside here, I'll take I'll show you guys here. Some of these bandits were inside. I should I should clarify that. I did clear out some of the people inside here. I was gonna show that, but honestly, again, same thing. It was basically just me running back and forth, summoning a wolf, and then running away. Now, this was their little cafeteria, so they're cleared out here. Let's go ahead and get a um candlelight spell going here so we can see. Uh, yeah, they've had some interesting items here, too. We found some, like, bandages and stuff, which has been kind of handy. Yeah, okay, here we go. So, the room is clear. Now, this is the room that I just attempted to clear, and I pulled somebody away from. So, I think we're actually good to sleep now. Let's go ahead and sleep and level up. Okay, so what I'm, we're going to do, part of the challenge for this um, playthrough is going to be we're only going to do Magicka increases until we hit level 10. No health or stamina. Oh, wow, we leveled up four times. Okay, so we leveled up three times, sorry. That is absolutely great. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and make it so our Conjuration costs less to cast, which is really important. And then they last longer too. And then we're gonna make so our Illusion spells cost less too. So that's what we're gonna be doing for that. Now we're hungry and we have plenty of food, so that shouldn't be a problem. Go ahead and eat a few things. Let's go for the heavy stuff. With that, what can we do magic wise? Yeah, so our wolf doesn't even take half our magic now. There we go. So now we can actually keep summoning our spells. So what we're going to do is I'm going to loot this place pretty thoroughly in terms of a couple specific items. I'm going to take all of the books that are just like individual because I do want to have like a little library set up at some point. I think that'd be really cool. And then if there's any like cool items, I'll show them when we kind of find a good place to slow down because I'm curious. There should be some more people. I did hear somebody else talking. I just don't know where they're at. So I have this place completely cleared out and looted as far as I know. So down in this little room right here, which I actually, it took me a little while to find, there was a library and there was a, a spellcaster kind of guarding it. And actually he has a potion on him. Yeah, healing potion. There we go. Oh, and some mage's robes. Hold on. Magical regeneration. Maybe we will switch over to using magic robes. Um, but there was a library here and there were tons and tons of books. There's still a few books floating around, but there's even more than what's here. I 
don't think I can really take anything else. We pretty much maxed out our weight right now on like books and other items that we're taking. So I don't know if we'll be able to take anything else. But for now, we know there's a library here, which is really cool. So again, just going with what I wanted to do for a playthrough, this is amazing. We wanted to be a book collector and we found a library. I don't think I've ever seen a library in this game before. So that's really cool. But yeah, effectively, I think this place is cleared out and done. So we're ready to move on. Now we did. We're pretty close to leveling up. Um, I might do a couple more spells and level ourselves up before we go. Just so that way we can rest and everything. But otherwise, yeah, I think we are ready to move on. Okay, I take it back. We weren't completely done. There's actually a prison here where there's a bandit inside. Um, same method we've gone through. Just summoning a wolf to deal with him and then running away. And then let's see if there's anything else here. I think this is pretty much everything. Yeah, so I'll do a quick search and see if there's anything, but I think this might be everything. Yeah, okay, so there was pretty much nothing down there. I searched pretty much everything, collected what we could, and we're ready to go. Now, I think that is officially everything here at the fort. So let's go ahead and head on out into the wilderness. Where's the door? Over here? Yep. Let's head on down the trails. Okay, so before we get going, which is just kind of down that trailway right there, uh, we do have a Stormcloak guy over here who did help us. I really wish I could, like, give him something for helping us out, but we can't. Uh, I'm going to go over kind of what we found here, uh, like the important things anyway. So we found a bunch of food and drink, obviously. Now, the most important things I think that we found here was we found some backpacks. Um, we found, yeah, the dark leather one, which um, increases our carrying capacity by 60, but reduces stamina and magic by 15. And then we found a mage backpack that only reduces our stamina by 15. And then carry weight increased by 50. Yeah, and then we found two fine leather backpacks, which um, increase our carrying capacity, reduce stamina magicka by 15. But we get 10% better prices. So some decent items, honestly. And then we found a woodcutter's axe and a pickaxe. And then we found a bunch more gems. We found some soap, some scissors for our hair so we can change the way we look. Some bandages, needles and thread, some more torches. Kind of a little bit of everything. And I'm really happy with this as like our first place that we ran into. It's so thematically fitting for what our backstory is that I'm just, I'm super pleased. And then again, we found tons of books. Like look at all these books we have. This is probably my favorite thing about everything we found. Like I said, I wanted to make sure we had some kind of library eventually. And this is a good start to that. Heading out the front gate here. I think it's pretty much just a straight shot now. Looking at the map. Um, we're right here. Yeah, this is the, the cut that we did right down here through the mountains. And it's just a straight shot down to the Guardian Stones. And I think, honestly, Helgen might be right over here somewhere. Because I think that might be where Helgen is. I guess we'll have to find out. But the Guardian Stones are right there, which is what I think we're going to head to first. I'm curious to see what benefits the Guardian Stones give us now. So we'll just continue on down here and see what we find. Okay, so I think I see this has to be Helgen, right? Yeah, it looked to be like fully intact still. This is pretty cool. Now, I've only seen one other mod where Helgen was completely rebuilt and it was really cool. So let's see if this is similar. This is pretty much exactly what I was expecting. This is really cool. Yeah, so Helgen is a full settlement again. We have shops, we have, it looks like an inn, pretty much everything. I didn't know what this was going to be like this in this mod. I was kind of curious what would happen without doing the actual, like, base start. But honestly, we don't really have any selling or anything to do. Honestly, we just need to get to Whiterun. That's really it. We have a full inventory mostly of stuff that we want to keep. So let's just warm up a little bit by this fire. Oh, it said we're warm, so I think maybe I'll just head on out. So this is the main entrance down here. It's funny, I even remember how, like, Helgen's laid out just from doing the intro so many times. Yep, and there we go. We have a wonderful view of Bleak Falls Barrows. We have this pathway. I do believe this pathway leads right to the Guardian Stones, so let's just head to them. All right, so we made it to the Guardian Stones, and let's take a look and see what each stone has to offer. So the Thief Stone makes you have more stamina, move faster, and take less falling damage. The Warrior Stone gives you more health and you block better. And the Mage Stone gives you more Magicka and they cost less Magicka to cast. Okay, so I'm curious to see how much our Magicka... We have 190 Magicka. So at level 5, so that gave us, what, 40? Oh no, we have that backpack too, so I'm not sure exactly. Either way, we have a lot. So with 190 Magicka, let's see here. A Summon Spectral Wolf now takes us only like a fifth or a quarter of our Magicka to cast. So I think we're probably at a point where showing you guys the combat is probably going to be a little more entertaining now because we'll probably actually be able to summon more than one thing back to back. And in the case of fighting this particular bandit, 
Now, right outside of Ember Shard Mines, we get to deal with the bandit that's guarding it. And depending on what the mods give him, he can be incredibly tough. So we're going to check to see how tough he is with this mod. I do want to help our zombie, but I'm going to kind of let things kind of play out. I just want to see what he's able to do on their own. Now, they're fighting in the grass. Ah, potions. No, that's cheating. I wish there was a way to, like, interrupt potion drinking. Now, obviously, that sucks for us, too. It's so, like, if that happened to us, that'd be really bad. But I have noticed that some of the bandits have, like, two or three potions, which really sucks. Because they just keep chugging them, and then it's pretty much impossible to kill them. But this actually works out now that we have so much magic at our disposal. Yeah, we can just kind of hang out here. and Yep, our zombie's pretty awesome these days. Oh, there's still more wolves, so... Oh, there's a whole bunch of them over there. There's like three of them right there. Come on, summon my zombie. Come on, fight. <laughs> I don't think our zombie has a chance here. Now, hopefully our zombie hits. Come on, swim. Oh, actually our zombie is doing really good. Go, zombie! I think the zombie has a pretty high resistance to damage. Because he doesn't always do a bunch, but, I mean, he just clearly took those two wolves out, like, almost instantly. Come on, wolf. Back here. Fight us. <laughs> That's scared. That's funny. <laughs> I wonder if I summon the spectral wolf, if that'll bring him back here. Come on, fight the wolf. Wolf versus wolf. Now, let's see how our wolf does against that one. I'm actually curious to see how good our spectral wolf is compared to a normal wolf. Alright. Good to hear. And then, so this is another new thing. So, I'm not going to show it to you guys because some people don't like seeing, like, skinning and stuff. So, if you actually, like, take the wolf pelt off the animals, you'll actually skin them. So, some time passes. I'm going to look away so you don't actually see it. Yeah, so an hour passes to take the pelt off. And then... We have the pelt now, but it actually takes some time to pass. Now, Riverwood is just up ahead, so we're going to go ahead and clean ourselves off here in the river a little bit. Because we are all full of blood and dirt and stuff, and hopefully... There we go. Water washes some of the dirt and blood away. So now we don't look super disgusting going into town. And I do like this. Because we entered town, our character automatically took his helmet off, so we're not wearing our helmet anymore. So we can actually talk to people without our helmet covering our face. Which is nice, for not being rude. Now, we're going to swing in here to the Riverwood Trader because I want to get the quest for the Bleak Falls Burrows, even if we don't do it right now. I just want to have the quest active. Well, one of us has to do something. I said no. No adventures, no theatrics, no thief chasing. Well, what are you going to do then, huh? Let's hear it. We are done talking about this. Oh, <clears throat> A customer. <laughs> Sorry you had to hear that. This is really cool. So in the base game, the place is a little bit messy, but in this mod, they trash the store. I love it. Um, Let's go ahead and equip our backpack that gives us better prices in case we decide to buy or sell anything. All right, let's go ahead and talk to Lucian. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and ask him what happened. Uh, yep, so the robbers came, took the golden claw. We all know that. Let's just offer wall. to get it back. Oh, and this is neat. Look at this. We actually have an option to help him clean up his shop. Let's go ahead and do that. We could always use help. Yeah, so it'll take six hours. Yeah, sure, you know what? Maybe he'll give us a discount or something. Of course. Yeah, so just spend six hours helping out, and we cleaned it up. Let's see what it looks like now. Thank you. Here, this is for you. And a hundred septums. Sure. Deal. And give us a Nordic War Axe, <laughs> which puts us overweight. So let's just Trinkets, sell it back to him. Odds and ends, that sort of thing. Now, we don't use weapons, so let's see what he gave us, actually. Um, yeah, nothing too crazy, so let's go ahead and just sell it back to him, because that just puts us overweight. Yeah, and so he has a bunch of different things that we could buy off him. Some of the stuff similar to ours. He has some robes. Nothing too crazy that I think that we need to try and buy. Now, we do have almost 4,000 gold now we're up to. We started off with a little over 3,000 because of 
our alternate start. And the reason we did that is um, our first companion that we buy, they cost either 500 to 5,000, depending on the mod installed. And I don't know how much they actually are in this mod. So I just took all the gold. That way we can hopefully be able to afford the companion I want. But yeah, I don't think he has anything too crazy that I think we need. So I think we're pretty much ready just to keep moving on. Yeah, all I really wanted was the uh, the quest, so we're pretty much good to go. I guess we could cook some food, see if we have any salt. Yeah, we, here we go. We do have... Yeah, we have some salt, so we can actually cook some meat here. I should have taken some more of the uh, the wolf stuff, but that's okay. We don't really need it. Good to see you. So now this is a good chance for us to kind of explain some things. So this mod adds in a whole new layer of speechcraft. So we can actually talk to everybody, and when we talk to them, we learn their name, and then when we say greetings... We can increase our speech skill just like that. We're almost to oh, level yeah. 5. Yeah, so I don't think Riverwood has anything for us specifically, so I think we're just going to head on. We will come back here. I actually do want to clear out Ember Shard Mine. I just want to get to Whiterun first and take care of some of the kind of things that I consider to be the necessities. So let's head on out and get ourselves to Whiterun. Alright, so I do see that the companions are fighting the giant out front here still, which is nice because maybe we can go give them a little bit of a hand. And we're pretty much at White Run, so this is kind of nice. This was actually, honestly, it's been a couple of hours for me, but for you guys, hopefully it's not taking too long. Let's go ahead and help. Get our wolf out there, and then... Now, I wasn't actually expecting to fight with anybody, so i got to be careful. You know, maybe we'll just heal people. There we go. Let's kind of help people out here. Who is taking the blunt of the damage? He has 1,200 health. My goodness. Okay, hold on. This is actually more dangerous than I thought it was. Uh, can we light him on fire? I was thinking that this was just going to be like a really quick like one and done thing. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen this fight take this long. Normally this fight is like basically over by the time we get here. So giants have almost 1,200 health. That's something I'm gonna have to remember. That's that's not pushover numbers there here. I might have accidentally healed him once too when I was there, so that could be part of the problem. I'm just gonna like keep like ticking away fire damage because while he's on fire he takes extra damage, so hopefully that helps. And that should be the end of it. Get him guys. That takes care of that. You handle yourself well. You could make for a decent shield, brother. Now here's the thing. With the companions, the reason why I wanted to run down and help is I'm actually going to ask to join. Oh my jeez, I can't talk. Let's see here. Looks like that's it. Got to go. Okay, great. Go away now. Now before we head into Whiterun, I want to explain exactly what we're going to be doing in this playthrough. To make it very clear to everyone. We are playing on Legendary Difficulty, playing on Survival Mode, and playing with an extremely brutal mod collection. Like I said, we have 1600 mods installed, most of which just make the game more difficult in some way, shape, or form. With that in mind, I want to do this as a semi-permadeath method of playing. Meaning, if we die by something that's preventable on our part, that's it, game over, we have to start a new character, and we will do that. I want to make sure that whenever we go out into the wilderness, we're planning ahead of time exactly what we're doing. We're not just willy-nilly running around going to random dungeons where we're going to get killed. Pretty much everything I want to do in-game for this playthrough is going to be kind of planned out ahead of time, so that way we have the best chance of survival. But I don't think we're going to be able to survive forever. It's going to take only one shot from a random mage or an archer and we're dead. We have very little health. We're always going to have very little health. And pretty much every enemy is going to either one shot us or two shot us. So really it only takes one or two mistakes and the game's over. Now with all of that being said, I want to try and show you guys as much as I can. But I am going to cut out a lot of the really boring stuff where I'm just running around town. Because that's going to happen. I'm going to be running around collecting flowers. I'm going to be running around collecting just random materials. And I don't want to waste your guys' time. I'm showing all that so I'll explain everything that I did kind of in the clips as I'm doing it so I hope you guys are okay with that let's go ahead and head into white run so that way we can finish up what we're doing today now the last thing we need to do before we're done is we need to go to the drunken huntsman here and we need to pick up Janessa now Janessa is one of my favorite companions because she's a dual wielder and she's also a dark elf just like us and she can cost anywhere from 500 gold to 5,000 depending on the mod installed and that's why I took all that gold from the alternate start through so let's go ahead and 
didn't see how much she costs. So she costs 1,040 in this mod, which is what I was unsure of. I didn't know how much she'd cost. So we're gonna go ahead and spend that thousand, and then we're just gonna kind of check out to see what gear she has, because I don't actually know what she'll have. Yeah, so she only starts off with an iron dagger and an iron sword. So our entire goal is to give her the bow, the arrows. I don't think she'll wear armor because she has armor usually that we just can't see. But I can give her the wolfskin cloak. Hopefully she'll wear it. And then we can give her a backpack, which I think will increase her carrying capacity. There we go. And because we're in town... This is one of the things that I want to make clear. When we're in town, we're not going to wear our armor around. So if something happens in town, like as we level up, if there's like attacks or anything, which in this mod, there can be attacks from different things, we could be at a disadvantage. And I want that to be that way on purpose. We want to be dressed as if we are actually fitting in. So now we're dressed like a normal town's folk for the most part. Obviously, we have the cloak on, which is a little bit different, but hey, it's cold outside. So I think that is where we are going to leave it for today. We have accomplished a great deal. Honestly, we cleared out an entire bandit encampment in the fort, and then we managed to get ourselves to Whiterun, all the way from the south side of the map. And then not to mention, now that we're level 5, we won't have to skip combat anymore. You guys can actually watch me do some of the combat, because we can keep casting spells throughout the encounter. We don't have to hide as much. So if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And if you could help me out, if you could leave a like, a comment if you have anything to say or to add to the challenge, and subscribe if you want to see more. This has been Falling Fox Gaming. I am your host, Blaine, and this has been Skyrim. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.